Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about the optimum population theory. So here is the introduction of the concept of optimum population. The relationship between population and resources forms the basis of the optimum population theory. Edwin Cannon, an English economist, has been given the credit for defining what later came to be known as the concept of optimum population. So here is the definition of this. Uh, optimum population is the ideal size of the population for workforce. It is regarded as the population that is large enough to provide an adequate workforce and small enough to avoid unemployment. So here is the history. The first beginnings of this concept may be traced to the writings of German professor Karl Winkeble. He, while describing the theory and policy, classified the nations into three categories according to the size of the population. So the first under this category is the underpopulated nation, second is the overpopulated nation and third are the nations with normal populations meaning a size favorable to the greatest possible productivity. So he is Edwin Cannon. He propounded the optimum population theory and he mentioned this in his book Wealth. The concept was then popularized by Lionel Robin, Carl Saunders, Dalton and many more. So here is the definition of optimum population. Dalton has defined it as uh, this optimum population is that which gives the maximum income per head. So these are the definitions given by others. So let's go to postulations or assumptions of the theory. The first one is the natural resources of a country are given at a point of time but they change over time. There is no change in techniques of production. Third, the stock of capital remains constant. Fourth, the habits and taste of the people do not change. Uh, then fifth, the ratio of working population to the total population remains constant even with the growth of population. Sixth, working hours of labor do not change. And seventh, the modes of business organization are constant. Then here we have the concepts of optimum population. This figure shows the optimum population curve. Uh, this is sorry, this is the point of optimum population, and x and the y-axis denotes the op output per head and the population size. Next, uh, there are three concepts which are used to define the optimum population. First one is underpopulation. Uh, it says that if a country, <coughs> country's population is not sufficient to utilize its natural resources efficiently, then uh, the country is said to be underpopulated. Uh, next one is overpopulation. If the population of a country is too big in relation to its natural resources, then the country is said to be overpopulated. We can give the examples of under and overpopulated nations as underpopulated nations are uh, generally the underdeveloped or the developing countries. Basically the underdeveloped countries like uh, those underdeveloped countries of uh, the African continents, they don't know how much potential they have in themselves and uh, they are not able to utilize their resources properly. So the optimum population is the size of population that permits the full utilization of natural resources. Next, uh, this is the figure denoting or depicting the population resource balance. Next, uh, this is the theory of optimum population. The x-axis and the y-axis denotes the national income and the size of population. The point F denotes the optimum population level and the curve AP is the optimum population curve. So uh, with given resources and uh, technology, the curve of the optimum population is NAP. So after uh, a few years or after a given period of time with the change in technology 
and the level of output the curve then increases and changes its, its position so here the optimum population curve uh, becomes a p1 and the optimum population level becomes f1 n1 this means uh, this area is underpopulated and this area denotes the overpopulation and this curve the middle one denotes the optimum population curve for this period of time after the resources and the technologies changes over time so with further increase in time uh, the the given resources and the national income level will obviously increase then this uh, optimum level will reach to the point f2 and the curve will be like this so this is the explanation of the optimum population theory you can go through it so thus increase in population will also help to increase the income level and adjust the optimum level because as the resources and technology increases the curve shifts upward so this means that uh, the income level can increase and uh, we can adjust the optimum level of population so the change in population the optimum population however is not fixed for over a period of time conditions are liable to change what was formerly the optimum may cease to be so under change condition of production this means uh, the change condition of production means the change in technology with the change in amount of input we are putting into the production process if it were possible to increase the supply of other factors proportionately to increase in population the optimum might be raised um optimum population is relative to resources and technology i have said this earlier so if there is increase in capital stock or natural resources or level of technology there will be an upward shift in the average and marginal product curve we have seen this already in the explanation of the theory so the per capita output will thus increase this means that the level of optimum population too will increase next uh, how we can measure the optimum population level so a theory has been given by dalton dalton has given a formula to measure the extent to which the actual population of a country deviates from the optimum population the extent of deviation is known as mal adjustment so the formula given by him is mal adjustment is equal to a minus o divided by o here o denotes the optimum population a is the actual population of the nation thus it gives the mal adjustment so if uh, after putting the actual data if the m is positive then the country is overpopulated if the m is negative then the country is underpopulated and if m uh, by uh using this formula is equal to 0 then the population is optimum for the country next uh the critical analysis of this theory uh there are some positive aspects as well as negative aspects of this theory so first we'll go through the positive aspects so uh this theory is easy to understand it tells us about the economic development of a nation uh, this is a dynamic concept that tells how to adjust and enhance the country fourth uh, it's a very practical concept as it says that the increase in population is not only desirable but also necessary for natural resources maximum utilization fifth according to this theory law of increasing return occurs after the law of diminish diminishing return starts so this we can derive from uh, the optimum population theory the optimum population adopts an optimist and realistic attitude towards the problem of population it relates population with wealth so it says that the population is a country's resource it's not uh, considered as a burden next uh, the negative aspects 
so the first one goes that uh, there is no evidence of optimum level it is a vague second very it's very difficult to measure the optimum per capita income because of the huge population of course the optimum level is not fixed it's oscillating uh, with increase in uh, population and the method of technology hmm. fourth it neglects and sorry it neglects social and institutional conditions fifth there is no place for states population policy in this optimum population theory as it is considered as a whole that means the optimum population level is derived for the whole nation and not for a particular state so uh, the state population policies are not considered here next it does not explain the determinants of population growth next the theory fails to explain how optimum population once reached can be maintained so the conclusion of the theory goes like uh, the optimum population can be regarded as that state of equilibrium between the population and the resources which satisfies the well defined needs of all the members of the community and which varies with both time and space hope you like the video thank you